At the making of this video, over half of the country is in violent protest and riot concerning the gentleman that was just blatantly killed by the knee of a white officer, George Floyd. Um, there are no words to even describe or talk about that. When you talk about wellness, um, it's difficult for a group of people to be well when they're constantly concerned about being killed or being violated or being just being scared all the time. So, as someone who is white and has a platform and mental health is something that I'm very passionate about, we're going to dedicate this space and time to talking about how we can work on countering what's happening in the world. How white people can support their black and brown brothers and sisters. So thank you for tuning in. I'm Wendy and this is Holistic and Well. This is my space. We cultivate a better quality of life through herbalism, intentional wellness, and self-healing. So today, I'm talking about some difficult stuff. I'm talking about some stuff that has got to be talked about. Um, black lives matter. It's not about all lives matter. It's not about that white people are unimportant and that their lives should be taken into consideration because they already are. Um, it's about focusing on what we can do, white people, to support black and brown because their lives do matter. Um, with the violence that has erupted and the protesting that is happening, we white people have to utilize the innate power that we have within our community and our societies to support that process and support the revolution. Um, it's been a long journey for me to understand and realize my privilege. Um, I was one of those people that said, I don't see color, which now that I say that, it sounds ridiculous. Um, but I was one of those people. Um, I was one of those people that said at one point that we all have an equal opportunity. And you know what? My life wasn't easy growing up. So what privilege do I have? Well, we're going we're gonna to debunk that. We're going to talk about what we can do to support this revolution. So let's get into it. Um, first and foremost, it really is about understanding what your privilege is. And I know that the argument many times with white people is that, well, I don't have money. How am I privileged? Um, I've endured A, B, or C. You can fill in the blank. Hell, we've all had shit happen in our lives. We've all had things happen that were hurtful. We've all had things happen in our lives that we wish didn't happen. But guess what? Um, that is just part of the human experience. But when there is a group of people that have a head start in the race, let, let's paint a picture. You have a track meet and you've got all of the runners that are lined up for the relay race. But guess what? This one runner gets to have a full minute start before the other runners. And, of course, they win the race. It looks better for them. Their time is better. That's privilege. And that's what has happened, is that we as white people, we have this built-in advantage because of our skin color. Again, it does not mean we don't experience adversity. It doesn't mean that we don't experience certain things in life. We absolutely do. But, I promise you, because I've seen it in action, is that when you put someone that is white against someone who is has melanin in their in their skin that the advantage is that the the lack of melanin the lack of bias the lack of prejudice the lack of predetermined judgment for that person with no melanin gives them an extra minute in the race so understanding your privilege um, when you say you're colorblind or you do not see color, you erase 
and diminish the experience that people of color have had. And it has not always been a pretty experience. So to say that you don't see color means that you don't see their experience. And if you don't see their experience, then you are not tuned in, you are not empathetic, you are not awake regarding what's going on in our country and our culture. Part of privilege, as I have been on my journey and I have begun to understand more and more, is that there is guilt and shame connected to understanding my privilege and knowing that it exists and figuring out what can I do moving forward to understand that my privilege exists and how do I utilize that for the common good for people of color. With guilt and shame means that we usually want to be comforted, but guess what? It is not the job of that person of color to comfort you and tell you that it's okay. Because guess what? It's not okay. Things are not okay. So when you are dealing and managing with that guilt or shame, you do that on your own. Do not expect someone that has experienced things that you have not experienced to comfort you because of your guilt or your shame. You know what? Work through it, get over it, and move on. Okay? That's what understanding your privilege means. The next thing we need to do as white folks is we need to open our minds and shut our mouths. Yes. Open our minds and shut our mouths. Now, that's easier said than done. I'm a very verbal, outspoken person. And for me to exercise the discipline of just being quiet sometimes is challenging. Because, you know what? Part of our privilege feels like that whatever we have to say is important and that people want to hear it. Well, guess what? They don't. Um, part of being quiet means that you're researching, that you are learning the history of our country. Not what we've been fed in educational context because, quite frankly, that's not everything that's happened. That's a tiny tiny millimeter of things that have happened. You don't get the whole story and you don't get the whole grotesque truth of the experiences that have been had by people of color. So reading and listening to things from reputable sources and talking to people of color and reading memoirs. So part of learning history is also being super cognizant and being super in tune with not making assumptions about the experiences or the thoughts or the desires of people of color. Don't make an assumption that because someone is black that they understand or know about something else. That's not cool. That's not okay. Um, but as white people, we do that all the time. Um, and when you do that, you're clumping people together and you're saying that everybody has had that same exact experience. And think about all the white people that you know. And have they all had the same experience that you've had? No. So to ask or assume that someone knows something because they are black or brown is insulting. Please don't do that. Another biggie is to understand your implicit bias. Um, we all, no matter how much we work on it, we all have certain biases. We are bred, we are raised, we are reared to have certain biases. But understanding what those biases are so that you can maneuver through them as you are being an advocate, as you are being an ally, as you are being a comrade, as you are being a support system to the people of color that are in your circle or in your community, it's very important to understand those biases. Some people have biases against gay people. Some people have biases against um, people that are certain heights. Some people have biases against someone that might have a, a tattoo or piercings or whatever. We all have biases. So it's very, very important to, first of all, understand that you have biases and to be able to identify your biases and maneuver through them. This is not about being perfect. Because guess what? We're not going to be perfect. But it is important to understand and be able to recognize where you still might be tripping up a little bit as you're supporting and you are being within the communities of people of color. Super, super important. Another really important thing to think about when you are 
opening your mind and closing your mouth is to not allow your ego to get involved. Um, a lot of times, like I said earlier, is that we feel that whatever we need to be said needs to be heard. And that's false. And so if you do feel like you need to say something and you do say it and you get shut down, you know what, don't internalize that. Don't make it, this is my ego. Don't do that. Take it as a learning experience and that, you know what, sometimes it's just about me shutting up. STFU. You know what that acronym means? Shut the fuck up sometimes. And that's super important to know when it's time to be quiet and when it's time to have a voice. Because if a person of color or group needs you to be a voice, they'll let you know. Or you will learn when to be a voice in those situations where you can utilize your privilege to the benefit or to the betterment of those groups of people. And that's what's super important about opening your mind and shutting your mouth. Opening your mind and shutting your mouth. If you haven't been asked about your opinion, don't give it. Uh, there are many times on social media that there is a uh, post and there are people commenting. A person of color has posted and primarily people of color are commenting. And next thing you know, Becky or Karen or Bob has interjected something that, that they feel is important. When guess what? They probably shouldn't have said anything. Um, and again, as someone who's very verbal and I really um, like to talk. <laughs> Um, it is challenging to learn when to be quiet. You know what? My opinions don't always matter to other people. And that's just the, the end, end game of it. Especially people of color, black and brown, brothers and sisters. They always don't need to hear what I think about their experience. Because guess what? It don't matter what I think. That's the end of the day. And that very third thing that we can do is be action oriented. So what does that mean? Yes, we open our mind and we close our mouth, but we have to learn when to use our voice and learn what platforms to use them on. Um, we've got a lot of rioting going on right now. We have rioting going on in Kansas City. Guess what? I know that I am not a frontline person for a lot of reasons. But I know that in other platforms like this one, like within my, my, my circle, when I'm at the grocery store and I see injustices, when um, I'm on vacation I see injustices, when I am in other places and I witness those injustices, that's the time for me to speak up. That's the time for me to be action oriented and be able to step in and be able to support and let people of color know, I am here. How can I support the cause? How can I support you? Because don't get into this white savior complex. People of color don't need to be saved. They don't. They do need the support of white people who can recognize that our system was never built for them. And as you become more and more socially woke, you'll understand that statement. And if you're not there yet, you're going to be like, it's going to be a head scratcher. And you know what? That's okay too. Um, because it's not about saving. I'm not here to save anybody. But I am here to support. And I'm here to utilize the power I have in my life for whatever reason. Because of education. Because I am white. Because I am a big mouth. Because I, I'm very confident about speaking up. Those are all reasons for me to speak up. But I'm not trying to save anybody. So this is not about being a white savior. There's nothing worse than someone who's a white person that feels like they have to save someone uh, because they're black or brown. Don't be that white savior. They don't need savior. Utilizing that privilege. I was on a cruise probably three years ago, maybe. And my son-in-law, who has super long dreadlocks, uh, it was him and it was my daughter who's very light complected and then it was my uh, son I've got a light complected son and I have a mid complected son and my my girl Sheila from Gangsta Goodies hey y'all um, so it was the six of us now we disembarked the ship and the five of us got through fine but my son-in-law because he had been profiled had been stopped now when you disembark a cruise ship they typically do not search your belongings. But that's what they did. They searched his backpack. 
and I let me tell you, there was fireworks popping off when I discovered that that had happened because we had gone through different lines and I did not see that had happened. But when we got back on that ship, let me tell you, there were some folks dancing around trying to figure out how to answer those questions. And that was my privilege being able to have those conversations where I think black and brown people have gotten to a place of where that's second nature. And it's not about so much questioning or raising a conversation or having conflict around those because conflict is uncomfortable. Some people are not comfortable raising conflict and having those discussions. And I think it's just become as natural as breathing is to me that those kind of situations happen and it's really about figuring out is this the one that I want to expand upon? Is this the one I want to go head first in and deal with? So I did and we got it all worked out. We got some credits to our account and we got all kinds of shit. But we got an apology and that was the most important thing is I hope I hope that those persons that stereotyped and felt that it was okay to go through his backpack, I hope that was a lesson for them and I hope it was food for thought and I hope that they were able to grow from that because it wasn't okay. It wasn't okay at all. And one of the final things as white people we need to be able to do is that, you know what, as we are unpacking our, our backpack of white privilege and there's actually uh, a sociological experiment that was done and I will link that in the description box is that as we are unpacking this white this backpack of white privilege we have to understand that we are relearning we are having to practice new skills we are having to learn how to maneuver and navigate through a world that is meant for us but now we are trying to be inclusive and understand that it's not just about us and that it's not made for other people that don't look like us to be successful and to have a healthy quality of life. So we're going to make mistakes, we're going to say things, we're going to do things and it's about learning from those mistakes and not internalizing those as who you are and what you are and being able to label yourself as a good or a bad person. That's not what it's about. So be patient with yourself, be patient with other white people in your circle, and understand that mistakes do happen. And when you are corrected by a person of color regarding your mistake, whether it is in, a, in an aggressive correction or whether it's in a, uh, an assertive correction, just be willing to take the correction and the learning experience and keep it moving. Take the ego out of it. Because guess what? You've got folks that have been enduring for centuries that kind of interaction. I can't imagine, I can't even begin to imagine just the simple things of life, of going into a building in a different door, utilizing different facilities because of my color, not being, not having access to things because of my color. So white people, we gotta do better. We gotta do better. I know this probably comes across really stern and really sharp and I'm sorry it might come across that way but I'm not sorry because these are things that need to be said and they need to be said by people that look like me. And I hope that you take these things with a grain of salt and you question yourself and you begin to learn and you begin to think and you begin to enlighten your perspective and your understanding of the dynamics and the systemic oppression and the um, racism and the discrimination that is very much built into the fiber of our country because it is and it's not going away anytime soon and we as a people we as a, a people collectively we as a people as white people we as people that are brown and black <laughs> The bottom line is that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And so it is up to each and every one of us to put the work in to understand our role in dismantling 
what we currently have going on in our society, in our culture. Bottom line. So I know I've probably ruffled some feathers with this video. Um, I might have some folks that unfollow me and that's okay. I'm prepared for that. Um, I hope that there are people that feel supported and feel loved and feel that they have someone that is in their corner because that is also my objective. Um, if you have any questions, please put them down below. If you have comments or thoughts, please put them down below because the more that we can talk about things, the more we can put things on the table and discuss them, the more that we can bit by bit take apart what has taken so long to put together. Hey, give me some thumbs up, some subscribe action. This is serious stuff. I'm passionate about it. Um, tune in next week, and um, until then, stay holistic and well. Take care. Bye.